can't be any movement. The room is full. So we might as well get started. We're starting a workshop, 90 minutes in one go. No one's got scared. Well, too bad. Ferenc Spola and Zoltan Pancil, the two of us, uh, will be holding this workshop. We both are involved in IT security. And uh, we have some know-how because we work as advisors. We have many years of experience. Uh, Zoli has some four-letter and five-letter acronyms. And he's uh, prouder of the four-letter acronyms than the five-letter ones. And uh, he's reported lots of uh, zero DIs. <laughs> so uh, you will probably come across him on many websites, hopefully not the website of the Hungarian police force. So the first 45 minutes, I will be moderating, and then Zoli will take, take over. Buffer overflow is the subject for the first part, and what it is, and how it can be functionally understood. We're not starting from scratch, and yet it will be quite hard to squeeze that inside 90 minutes, and Zoli will focus on the hardcore subjects. It's in three parts. Andres Kobay will carry on from where we will leave off, and then um, Buherator uh, will have Metasploit workshop. So if you get to like this, uh, you will have plenty to do in the afternoon as well. And this unofficially distributed Windows version is XP SP2. We apologize to uh, other than Hungarian speakers because it's in Hungarian. Nothing extra. Uh, Perl and Python are the environments. And uh, there's a word processor and a debugger and a meta frame, which we will only use in passing. So any one of you could easily make an image for themselves like this. The very first slide is something we won't focus on. In order to exploit buffer overflow, we will have to find a vulnerable point in the program and make it crash. It would have been nice to have a workshop on this fuzzing. So I'm not going to deal with how to look for exploitable loopholes in applications. The starting point is we have an application, and we understand that there is a weakness in it. And easier, M to MP3 converter is the first application. And from somewhere in the internet vulnerability databases, we understand that if we feed it, uh, 30,000 A letters in a file, it will uh, crash. So let's see if we give it not A letters, but something else uh, to make it crash. So about fuzzing, you will find further information using these links. The presentation and the whole video will also be mounted on the website. So you won't miss out on any of this. Why do we want to make the application crash? Because I'm malevolent, and I want the application to crash because of my content rather than the programmed content. And if I can make an application crash by using 30,000 letters A, um, it may not be good for me, and it may not be appropriate for running. Um, my idea. First, I need to get into the memory my own program. Without that, I don't stand a chance. And also, the application uh, control should be handed over. There's the instruction pointer, EIP. If I can take over the application so that the memory address of the next instruction should be um, reset to my shell code, then that's great. Stack overflow is the subject of the first uh, part. Uh, Zoli is uh, drawing. Well, we'll put on a Picasso during the workshop. And uh, we'll talk about stack overflow at the beginning. And then we'll see what happens afterwards. And we'll skip through this. Two registers are interesting, ESP. Uh, that 
points at the top of the stack, and uh, you need some previous understanding of uh, stacks and heaps. We will not describe that. And the EIP includes the instruction pointer, which will locate in the memory the next executable instruction. So we'll focus on that ESP. Uh, stack can be manipulated, and the EIP can also be. I'll skip through this very quickly. That's the entry level. That's the um, uh, stack and heap data structure. Uh, all of you are supposed to know that. If you don't, you'll find out. Here's a much nicer slide, which I'll show you. What's the point of stack overflow in the red and white frame part? You will see a very simple function, which is given a string type variable and a local variable, 128 bytes of memory allocated. And without any checks, the string of any length we get is copied over to this 128 long memory address. If I feed 30,000 bytes, the first 128 won't cause a problem, but the rest will fill up the memory areas. So stack overflow, very quickly in a nutshell, works like this. Here's the stack structure. After a function call, and the yellow part is the one to watch here, because if there's a function call, there's a stack frame, which is marked in yellow here. And if the parameters go into the stack one by one, and EIP is saved because the application will have to remember where to return after running the function. And here's the EIP value as well. It's not so important for us right now. And the local variables go to the top of the stack. And what's the point of stack overflow? We've locked 128 bytes of memory, but if I give it a lot more data, then I overwrite the rest of the stack content, including the EIP value, which is very good for me, because once I've overwritten it, I can hand over control to the program code I've sent in. And to go from words to deeds, I'll show you something. We tried at least three times to make sure that things should gel without a problem. But of course, I guarantee you that they won't, they won't be working now, even though it's the same virtual machine that you got as well. Now, on the desktop, there's uh, two directories, part one and part two. Now, the projector is quite weirdly set here. And part one is the interesting part, easy uh, 01 and easy uh, 9 pair scripts are included here. And we will use them with this very friendly easy RM to MP3 converter. That's the latest version, latest release. We'll get it to run a calculator application for us. And the nature of the calculator is not that interesting, but you can certainly believe me that, that this application wasn't designed to run a calculator. Can you um, see from the back of the room, that, or should I zoom on to this? So first we focus on making the application crash. All we send in is a cache 01. RM to MP3, uh, we feed 30,000 letters A into it. In order to avoid technical glitches, I made thorough preparations, and I want to make sure that this is working. Well, I uh, drag and drop, and it's crashed. It brings up a debugger, which is the visible evidence that it's crashed. And you can beautifully see this, that EIP is overwritten with lots and lots of letters A. And that's the cause of the crash. If I manage to overwrite the EIP using letters A, 
I can feed different content as well. I hope you can see that somewhat. It's the stack in the debugger, lots and lots of letters A. The two criteria will be met. First of all, I can overwrite the EIP using A letters, and I use different content in a short while. And also, I've found different memory areas, including my data in the stack. So if the EIP is overwritten, and if I replace the letters A with my own program code, then that will be great. All I need to make sure is that control is handed over. One small remark, if you miss out on any of these short parts, we've picked an example that you will find a full description of on the web. And there's a, a team called Coraline Team. I will give you uh, the link at the end of the presentation. They have several pages of uh, PDF documentation on this. So when you're back home and uh, you've lost out on this one, um, you can still check it. I'd better find the part to override the IP with. We sent in 30,000 letters A. They all went into the address, but where were the four bytes that overwrote the EIP? We'll have to find them. Well, we can use a trial and error, the fool's method, because let's say I, I will send in 5,000 letters A and 25,000 letters B. Um, the only drawback is I have to restart the application. But, you know, it's no pain, no gain. So I'm sending in the input, and now I see letters B, because the first 25,000 letters are not much use. It's only to make the application crash. And the second 25,000 uh, bytes are of importance. So it's the second part of the action that I can play around with. And I can run a binary search. And, uh, continue by having the samples, but this is not what I'm going to do now. Here's the Metaspoil. Um, it's a great tool on Metasploit, which is uh, designed for this. It's called Bot and Create. Bot and uh, Create. And if I say 5,000, it's going to generate a 5,000 character string. And it will turn it into a unique combination, so it will be able to give you the exact beginning and end of any four-letter combinations. And of course, in the second 5,000 uh, section, I'm going to feed this 5,000 uh, byte passage. And I'm going to get the information out of Metasploid where the four uh, byte string is located within the 5,000. It's not fast, but at least it's slow. So you watch for this. You write it on a piece of paper. If you're really old-fashioned, you copy it on the, onto the clipboard, and then you will ask Metasploit where that character string is located. A pattern offset is a small a tool, and you give it the pattern you saw in the register, and you tell it to look for the same information in the 5000 string. And it will give you what I already prepared. It was at position 1064. That's where uh, 6A42, the four-character string is. Why is that good for me? Because I will know the exact position in all that garbage of the four letters to override the EIP with. Somewhere in the memory, I will feed uh, a lot of letters A, but I certainly expect letters B in hex 4.2. And we'll also have letters C to insert our own code. Let's see if I'm right.
uh, we're writing this exploit on the fly and it's not a stable one. Sometimes it's working on and off, but hopefully it's going to work in the demo. You can see 424242 in the EIP. I'm very glad because it fulfills the first uh, precondition. I have the four uh, bytes location to override the EIP with. And then, of course, the next question is well, what exact content to use for the EIP. But I already have the location, and I'm happy. I'm also happy that the letters C can be seen at the bottom, so the shellcode can also be inserted. Well, this is an ideal animal that we're working here. And this guy uh, will give you the EIP location. And Zoli is going to describe a different uh, example. But in this case, we have a perfect guy that's very tame and uh, very easy to manage. Now, going through the next step, let's put EIP aside. We've identified the location of the four letters, and we'll come up with the content. And in the stack, we saw lots and lots of letters. See, I sent in some 500, and we don't know which of the 500 were visible. So we try to narrow down for the share code. And whether I'm looking at the beginning, the middle, or end of my letter C, a simple trick. We include a character string at the beginning of uh, the C string so that we can recognize it in the memory. And we should not skip this step because we'll see that, again, easy RM to MP3 is a very handy uh, tool, but there's a small trick. I'll drag and drop. It's running, running. Can you see it, by and large? D, E, F, G, here. And you can certainly see that it doesn't start with 1, which means that the variable that I want to use my share code for has to be shifted. So it's not the first uh, letter, but maybe um, from the fifth byte backwards. And that still is good. All we do is shift the whole string over by four bytes will include four X's. It could be anything. We need four bytes for the shift. And unless we miscalculated something, then in the stack, the first digit should be one. Let's check. Whose pacemaker is about to crash? It's not that exciting, is it? And we're glad because the first digit is one. We're halfway through toward meeting the second precondition. We need to insert our own code. We've done half because we've got the memory segment where I can send my own code into. And it will start as I want it to. Mm, OK. Now your smile is getting bigger and bigger because uh, it's increasingly evident that I will be able to crack this. Now, these four letters make a difference here. That's the PEC uh, function, but nothing to worry about. All we need is to include this memory uh, content to the EIP. And where is this memory from? And 01B423A. Uh, uh, How do I get this content? How do I know that that's exactly what I want to include? So let me explain. I share code 1, A, B, C, D, etc. That's in the stack. That's at the top of the stack, to be exact. And that's, let me ask you a test question. Zoli is leaving. I'm not happy. What should I tell the application if I want it to execute uh, what I will send in, uh, one ABCD and so on. Use simple language to make sure that we understand. So in simple lingo, describe what I should say to the application. To the place where this code is. And where is my code? At, at the top of the stack. So I heard someone say, let's jump to the top of the stack. Very good. And I want my uh, application code to jump up to 
top of the stack. So how do we say in the assembly language to the, the top of the stack? So jump, certainly, and what? Unfortunately, without the mic, I'm not getting this. So. Well, I didn't fully get uh, this point. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's it. Well, ESP contains the top of the stack, and if I tell uh, the program to jump, well, jump ESP is the assembly language version of this. Now, let me ask you, why did I have this complicated memory address rather than jump ESP? And that's an advanced question. Uh, that's true, but it's not an answer to my question. Uh, why do I write an address here instead of uh, ESP or something like uh, uh, indicating the top of the stack? In this form, it is not true. At that address, there is a jump ESP instruction. And then uh, uh, this memory address should be written in. Um, it will be read out from this memory address. And then then uh, we get this instruction, which, we, which means that we should sh jump to the top of the, to, to the stack. So the the title of the uh, the address of the instruction is enough, and then we get fetch the instruction, and then we jump to the top of the e, e, the stack. How do I how do I get this address? I got it from the debugger. There is a debugger feature here. Uh, it is a historic moment. Uh, we we use the debugger to use this easy MP3. And quite simply, I'm just looking for an instruction jump ESP over this memory area. Just a simple search in all of the modules, a jump ESP instructions. It's easy to hack, just you should use the, the, the mouse click. It's like Hollywood, uh, everything is flickering. We, we got quite a number of jump ESP, only you should look at the green lines. Uh, the, uh, the big books say th that we should uh, find memory addresses from the application now on DLE. Because the Windows DLE may change from version to version. So the wise old books say that uh, we should find a jump ESP among the applications instructions and then we are lucky in this time at this time and uh, if everything goes well then we have the same memory address written in here there is an important remark here there is one thing we should be very careful about uh, zero but shouldn't be in it uh, two zero shouldn't be next to one another one zero indicates the termination of a string in, in each and every computer language. So uh, we have a string with, with letter rays and then we have shell code at the end. And there is, if there is a zero byte somewhere, then it uh, will be interpreted as, a, uh, as an end of the string and then it will be thrown away. This is a uh, rule of thumb. Uh, sh that should be followed in 99.9% .9 of the cases. Two zeros next to one another is something that we don't like. Okay. We just shoot it down. I'm really worrying about Zoli because she should get back by now. Otherwise, I wouldn't run this because it won't do anything extra with which we can uh, jump to the top of the stack. We can believe this. And I take a giant stride forward. E in the EIP, which is the, the top of the stack, uh, 
and then we should uh, change uh, the letters and days uh, into some share code uh, which really looks ugly, ugly, odious. How shall we get share codes? We don't write share codes. Uh, some privileged people, uh, the elite sect, writes it, but normal people don't write it. Normal mortals don't write it. We can get it from the net. There are lots of Shaku database exploit, for example, or uh, we can generate it with the metal spoiled. And Balin is going to speak about metal spoiled. Metal spoiled is a CISP level task. You should go on clicking, you should find a platform that you like, and more or less, uh, in uh, addition to giving, uh, to specifying two parameters, then you will uh, produce a very ugly sequence, and this is the shell code. And we don't crack programs uh, uh, because we we don't want to uh, run the computer of or our victims, but these things are much more interesting. Zoli is back. Thanks, God. And then we check if it operates, if it functions. Uh, this is the, the, the most um, a delicate part, because if it doesn't work, then everything can be stro thrown away. I'm a bit worried. Which one did I run? Nine. In the morning, it was really working. There is no computer in the background, but uh, let me just give a 9 again, specify a 9 again, it will just produce this file. That's it. It's, it's breathing and running. Yeah, I was surprised that there were no hitch, hitches. So we wrote an exploit for it for the easy convert program and then only our imagination is the limit and the sky is the limit we should modify anything else but the shell code only then is it true if it's really handy a handy animal if the share code is longer than the amount of space I have for storing it, that's uh, that's one hitch. And then I will tell you what we can do. Or there are certain characters contained in it because because of it, it really won't run. But otherwise, we are happy that it's going to run and will be able to run. That, that that was the simplest exploit writing method. We have a stack overflow. We have space for the shell code to get in, and then we can run it uh, with the help of a jump ESP. The basic principle wouldn't change. If somebody understands or has understood it so far, then there will be no more no more sucking afterwards. There will be a big sucking, but uh, otherwise you will be able to understand it simply. If we understand, uh, if we understood how everything is overwritten, then we will be in a very good position. Okay. This is one thing I wanted to show to you, and the other thing is is a sorry tongue MP3 player. I think the latest version one one dot zero. It, it wasn't developed after 2006, it sounds very good uh, because it seems to be the latest version that we are breaking or cracking. Otherwise, the rest is under development. Okay, let's go back to the slideshow. SCH-based exploits or uh, not only EIP can be buggered, but uh, this is the Structured Exception Handler, SEH, which is always given, uh, put to the application. Uh, so exceptional cases, exception handlers are important thing. Small window. 
uh, which Microsoft sends us a, as program X by calls as pro program, then we shoot some message to, to Microsoft. We have a very good diagram here showing what the situation is. It's even a nicer one than this. That's a nice color picture. We like it. The story goes like this. If there is an exception handling block, then the, in addition to the previous things, the stacker will also contain a, an exception registration record next. You see the arrows. It is eight bytes, bytes in length all the time, two times four bytes. The first four bytes is a pointer to the next um, uh, exception uh, handling block, and the next byte is just a simple pointer to the code, which must be executed in the case of an exception. If uh, if you wrote already exception handlers, then you know that it is put in a list. And if there is an exception, then the program check if this catch branch is applicable. <laughs> And then uh, they, they will move to this memory place, and the, and the, the instruction found that will be executed. Otherwise, it will be started from the beginning. Uh, the reason why it is interesting to us after Stack Overflow is that the exception handler frame, frame uh, written in red is in a very good place. Why? Because. Uh, how did we, we make overflow before? How many more bytes did we squeeze in? We, we, you, you, we have to reserve more place for the local vari variable. You remember that we pushed down the stack before. It's under the local variables. If I push in more data into the stack, then I can push everything down to deeper levels in the stack. For which I have, uh, again, a very nice diagram. What will be our goal? First of all, an exception would be desirable, but not, uh, we don't always have the chance to have this exception. On the other hand, we uh, we should achieve that our shell code uh, be used to, to jump the control, our control. In the case of an exception handler based exploit, we will do two things. Current SC handler, exception handler will be the memory address will be rewritten that it should point at a pop pop red sequence uh, which handles the the stack you will understand that later and the other th secondary advice is that the, we should uh, push a memory address into the next pointer where our shell code is to be found exception comes current sc handler is is uh, is executed pop pop red uh, we'll, we'll uh, pop up a second exception, and then we'll check where to go in the case of the exploit, and we'll carry out this instruction. And then it will point to my shell code, which will then be executed. More or less, it will just look like this. Lots of letter A's all the time. And then something ugly will be written in here, that's the shell. And then pop, pop red comes here. It's not surprising. Uh, we will look for pop reds like we did look for uh, jump ESP. And then no, no operations uh, instructions will be written here. And then let's see how it works. The first doesn't do anything here. Yeah, we will it will just squeeze in 5,000 letter rays and we will see if the program will fail. Zoli, please don't go so far away. That's my message. So I have 50 minutes for this stand up, otherwise I will just collapse. I'm, I was cheating, that was the final resu result. It was a little cheating. Uh, it cannot be that good. And it just spit out the icon without any debugger, but there is a very nice exceptional handler in it. 
uh, written nicely. That's why we are going to write an exploit based on exception. But uh, I would like to see the debugger, what happens. So I start the whole thing in the debugger. We start it. It loads in. We play. It, it dies. It's dead. We are not looking for EIP, but we are looking for SEH, the, the exception handler chain. And then we are a bit overjoyed because the SC handler starts with 4141, which are the code for letter A's. Then the same uh, play goes as it, it did before. Out of this three to 4,041 codes letter A's, we should find those bytes that we really need, the pop, pop rat, I think. We use the text editor. We check this long sequence. And then we, we check those four bytes that went down to the SE handler part. I won't show do you this. It's not pop rat, but something else. And this is the moral summarized here. That's what we see in the SC handler. If we ask Metaspoils afterwards, on which by it is, within the character sequence generated by it, and it says 588. This is the solution. But there is a question. It, it means that I send a 584 letter A's and then comes share code. Why do we have 584 here? And uh, I, I really just give a glimpse of the solution you before. SC handler is the second four bytes of the eight, bit, eight, by, eight bytes. So what I could check in the debugger was the lower four bytes, but also the, the upper four bytes are in play. And that's why I subtract four and then send in the same number of letter A's. And, and then comes the next um, exception handler part. And then the program that should be executed. And then uh, we must uh, send in the share code somehow because we would like to execute the share code. So this is more or less a running or runnable version. Let's try to run it. I always have to, to start it from the debugger because when it fails, it will be in that silence. When it so when it is dead, it's silence all over the, the battlefield. It died peacefully and silently. And then what we have, 42. These are the letter Bs, 42, 42, 42. That's what I wanted to put in, the code of the letter Bs. Before that, there is a break instruction, but it doesn't matter anymore. Good. What do we know? We know, and this is a, a rule of thumb for SEH exploits. Yeah. Instead of letter B, Bs, I would like to write pop, pop, red. And we can find a pop pop red sequence with the debugger. This is the sequence we would like to find, three instructions. I checked some pop, uh, pop uh, e, e I S I instructions. Uh, this is a very frequent common instructions. This is the memory address. Everything is perfect. And from this memory address, there is only one thing that I should go, namely, Let's go back to this number four, how it dies in debugger, in the debugger. Uh, I'm clicking all over the place without any system. I hope it will improve. Sorry, sorry. Did I press it? No. 
didn't. It will, it will be seen in a second. It looks very nice. It shows very nice. This is the memory address given or specified by Pop progress sequence. So with this, if there is an exception, then uh, this is the memory address where the whole thing will jump. And I have to do nothing else but. I just shoot it down. And I have nothing else to do but. Ah, that's an interesting species. Uh, it just simply says jump six bytes forward. It's a simple instruction. What is happening here? There is an exception arising, and then pop pop red is executed. What does red do? Returns. Re, uh, just uh, uh, pop the top of the stack, and uh, and the, this instruction should be executed. Pop pop is double because eight byte must be popped up. On the, on the top of the stack, we have the uh, exception handler. And when it is executed, uh, there is a prologue of eight bytes. Mm, this is how the routine, the exception handler routine, routine operates. Pop, pop, one pop takes off four bytes, the second pop takes the second four bytes, altogether four bytes ta is taken off or popped off from the top of the stack. And then this clever thing written by me here will be just read out by red, and I jump six bytes forward. But why six? Why, why six? Let me help you. Here I give you some help, hint. Here I am. Here I stand, I can't do, uh, I can't do else. And this is where it is written. 669. We jump over the two pops and and what else do we jump over? And the four bytes being underneath. And this is my shell code sitting here wickedly. <laughs> and physically, I put it after the SC handler. This is the place where the shell codes are. We always send in a string. What does this two no operation instruction NOP doesn't do anything, it's just a no operation. Uh, the, the, to, to jump six bytes is given here. If I add two knobs, four bytes must be there to jump to be jumped over and the knobs uh, won't harm anybody. The reason why I'm jumping six bytes because we jump over one knob, second knob, another four bytes, and then the control is here. And it can start running. If all goes well, when I have this run and I push that inside the MP3 uh, player, it will uh, give us this nice calculator. Well, uh, show operators uh, look these very ugly animals and lots of shell operators um, look very similar in all of them you will find almost all of them you will find these uh, lines whether uh, it will jump six or 11 it depends on how it is uh, structured and here it says pop pop uh, and here's a shell code uh, this one is a bit more convoluted, but lots of exploits are very similar, and uh, lots of them will look like this. Amit még ígértem, hogy mutatok linkeket. Uh, ezt én fölírnám, bár a szlájdok elérhetők lesznek. Well, as I promised, uh, Coraline.be8800. This has the PDF tutorial, and the website will also have the presentation. So even working at home, you can get ahead relying on this. And it's the first, second, and third parts 
they end uh, generally there, the SEH exploits. So you might as well check them out. And now we're switching roles. Are you bringing your laptop or are you going to use this? Now we'll switch the floor uh, quickly. What if you just uh, showed us your slides on here? There are only two slides. I think you can uh, quote them off the top of your head. Well, then uh, bring your laptop over. Oh, perfect. I forgot something. It's a technical note. I'm an organizer again. Is there anyone who is a Czech colleague? Well, if there isn't any, then no problem. Welcome everybody. A második részt én fogom tartani, Páncél Zoltán vagyok. Uh, I'm doing the second part, Zoltán Páncél is my name. I was asked to explain why I'm wearing these clothes. An American uh, security expert was bored and he identified four categories of other IT experts on security and he says the ones writing exploits and, and such like security pimp is their cast. So I try to dress accordingly. I'm going to present two things to you. One thing we couldn't burn on the CD or the DVD because the basic system would have been two gigabytes. So one is an SAP product and an HP node manager product loophole is what I'm going to exploit. So first of all, the SAP product loophole has already been patched. So this is already history. At the ZDI site, there was an announcement that there was a security loophole in the product, so a simple advisory will turn into an exploit. I tested it uh, beforehand, so uh, in principle we should get a shell at the end. So the fundamental exploit will look like this. I'm using a trick here because I'm using Backtrack and Windows. Windows is the same image you got uh, on the CD or DVD. The reason I brought up this small screen, unfortunately fuzzing, uh, we won't have enough time for that, but I'll explain quickly how you can spot the loophole. The announcement is at Shotmax DV. Um, the loophole was in there, in security. It only says that uh, port 7621, if you push lots of data inside, you can take over control of the register in the application. And I'll make a drawing about this, how you can easily find out. It's a freely available, downloadable uh, tool from the internet, and there's no mic on the other side, so I'll have to shout. Now, this is available for Linux and Windows. Unfortunately, the sound level is very low, so it's going to be difficult to interpret this. And here's my Windows-based machine, and it's running software, and here's the Linux-based machine. And I can say that the client should not log on to the Windows or the local host, but to this alternative, which will grab the packets and return them to the Windows interface, acting as a proxy. 
So all we need to do is once we connect to the server, and then we take over the packets from the Windows client. And then we can identify byte by byte. There are tricks to fuzz them, long, long strings. And all we need to do is to use the Windows host running the database. If we run a debugger, we will wait for exceptions. That's a simple template, which is not yet filled in. It's also available on the CD. I left it in here because later on you will be able to use that to write other exploits. Thankfully, programmers can write code so that one template can lead to many subsequent exploits to security loopholes. And in this code let, you can see the Python code here, just to mix balance Python here. Let's see what we could interfere with uh, looking TELF and 66. We tried to fuzz and zero, 00 and going through like that. And it, it jumps out in the debugger that if we start fuzzing this part, then Ferry mentioned this several times, our data will find their way into the EIP register. So. All we need to do is to send that data to the target server. And of course, I'm using a gimmick because I have a stage three file here. And as you can see, there are 15,000 additional A's to make the application a truly crash. And then the value here, that's uh, capital A, 41, 41, 41, 41. And this will be included in the EIP register. And if technology stays with us, so far it's not very much been with us. So if I run this stage three code here, it's using the same windows you got on your CD or DVD. And if I select this um, port 7 to um, 10, and we let uh, the application continue to run. OK, this is what I was talking about. Just a second. I want the address. I'll get it, and then we'll be OK. If I start this program, it no longer indicates an error. Within seconds, in principle, we should get a nice exception. And those nice numbers are gone with the other stuff. And you can see that EIP was overwritten using 41, 41, 41, 41 as a character string. If you paid attention to Ferry's presentation and if you understood what he was saying, you will very quickly discover what the major shortcoming of this is. We have a huge problem. Yes, that is the case. We don't see any A's in any of the registers or the stack at the bottom here. We don't see any memory address that would refer or point to that value. Why is that a problem? Why can it be a problem? Because our own code cannot run. So now we go back to the no frills method. It doesn't work everywhere. I'll ask at the end of my presentation um, to list at least two Windows distributions where this would not work. So I reopen the system. because the service goes dead, because the debugger drags it down, and it's crashed anyway because it refers to um, an unavailable memory index, um, um, a memory address. 
where there is no meaningful data and there isn't even such a memory address, in fact. So how can we debug this? How can we include and where can we include our code? All we need to do is set a memory address as the return address to include a breakpoint. And then our system won't crash. It will rather halt. The debugger will halt it at a certain memory point. And then we can check the memory, because somewhere there must be lots of A's, except that um, there is no pointer pointing at the A's right now. And we can track that. So in a simple approach, we can give it an instruction to jump there. There's a nice tool. It's on the CD. It's also available in the desktop. It's the findjump.exe. Make sure you save it, because on, on the web, it's very difficult to find. It's not easy to come by. And even the source is difficult to come by, compile. So if you want to do such things, it's very useful. Now, I need to specify the DLLs. Which DLLs? The DLLs associated with uh, the program. In kernel uh, 32 DLL is one example, but there are lots and lots of DLLs used by the applications. All we do is pick any operations, jump ESP or call ESP is what I'm looking for, and this intelligent tool will give us the address. That's where the instruction is located. In principle, these addresses vary with the Windows version and service packs, even with the language. If you look at a Hungarian version or an English uh, Windows XP uh, uh, service package too, then in principle you should rewrite the code. But in this case, we've uh, toppled the rule because it was written for the English XP uh, and we'll be able to use that in the Hungarian uh, SP. So there might be some tricks that Windows aren't disclosing to us. So let me now modify the exploit, which is working in principle. And I reset the address to return to. And I'll squeeze lots of information into this line. Let me highlight this. And the rest are commented out, except for the first one. Otherwise, the server would uh, throw the data away because it would not be able to understand them. And as you can see, it was quite a fight to get this operational code together. What this is all about, I'll present it. But first, let me show you how we can uh, debug this exploit and how we can find the A's we sent in. I'll copy this small code, snip it out, or excuse me, in memory address. And again, I'll go back into the program. Immunity debug is the one I like because it gives me the port numbers where the services are located, so I don't have to manually go out and look for them. Now again, I connect back to this application, and if all goes well, I'll enter this address. And you can really see call ESP. I double click, add a, a breakpoint, and then I will continue to run the application. And now here's the technical glitch again. If we start this, I hope you'll be able to see. Or not. Oops, sorry. I sent in the, the original, and this will be OK like this. So again, I repeated it. 
I can't really see the screen here and I can't tilt uh, the screen further back.
majd a megfelelő részt. És most látjuk, hogy ugye megjelent egy új kapcsolat, és ha visszalépünk a Linuxba, hogy egy kicsit változatosabb legyen a dolog, akkor egy, igen, telnet parancsol. Have a bit of variety here. Then at the address 150, I use telnet to get shell in. It has run with um, administration authority, then it has admin or system authorization, which is the case in 99% of all cases. So much about this demo. Exploit, uh, do you check the Exploit DB page? Uh, the off-page security guard, uh, we look at VW Milworm, uh, if you take a look. This is where you can um, can apply for a tester, and uh, there is a very short description about the security error, and then you can form a team, and then you, sh you will be able to write an operational exploit for those who are interested in this kind of things. And now comes the the demo which didn't operate this morning and uh, then I uh, modified it and it uh, worked even less and I went back to the original state and it started to operate uh, all of a sudden. Unfortunately it is not on the DVD but it is uh, downloadable from HP. The only huge problem which makes this software uh, crackable is that uh, who knows the network node manager of HP? Please raise your hand if you you know the, this thing that I. There is one problem of this software. It should be able to have an insight into all parts of the network, otherwise it cannot manage and diagnose the devices. But if somebody cracks it, then firewalls and similar things uh, just uh, keep uh, fall tumbling down. Because with that IP address, uh, the network uh, allows you to get in and get out. And if somebody tries to to disable the office segment from being accessed, and uh, they use monitor, monitor uh, all day. If we would like to monitor, then from this server we can crack it. And let me just show you a very rough exploit to you, which is not even uh, ready yet. It is just a semi in a semi-finished condition. Let me just explain to you, and you will see what what it what it is all about. This is a real rock and roll situation, and you can spend countless or dreamless nights with it. Uh, the previous question: Why could this exploit uh, be operational on XP? Because we jump into the stack in a direct way. Oh. Just try to think of uh, defense solutions. Uh, it, yes, XP, SP2, the uh, stack is always there, there's no random, randomization, and if we have Linux, and then, uh, then it moves the stack from different uh, memory places uh, to all new different uh, memory places, it will be always operational, but uh, just give me two copies of Windows where it doesn't operate. Uh, on uh, on 6 and 7, it doesn't work. So if you put its application there, then luck plays an important and very hard part for us to solve it. We forgot to tell you that these things are not shown to you to write exploits and break into all kinds of systems, but it is an important part of IT security. This is the penetration testing part of IT security. It is uh, a kind of vulnerability test, uh, and the report uh, 
where you work from your brain uh, instead of using automated scanners and can understand errors like this is much much uh, superior to system systems where uh, there are only mechanical things uh, in uh, outside Hungary if somebody if uh, just breaks into a system in legal work then the reports uh, should contain exploit codes that they have really used uh, the problem is uh, uh, not a kind of pasting from me uh, copy pasting from Milburn but codes of your own development and it uh, it uh, shouldn't be like uh, like directly running it from the report but uh, we should go down to to the level that it will override the register with letter raise and from this we can take further steps um, if uh, we would like to crack a system uh, then they can do malicious things uh, in the for the company how much time do I have no more time do you have HP network node manager has a corrected error and uh, this is the following it is composed of several things this is a big software with uh, lots of uh, smaller and larger applications the larger the code is the more opportunity for errors there are uh, it's a huge code so the, the whole system will uh, put on two gigabytes extra and that's why I couldn't put it on the CD or DVD I'll show you a part of uh, uh, the system with which you can diagnose certain things. Say it runs on the web. The problem is that uh, it will be given two arguments, and the sum of the two arguments is bigger than a certain number, and there will be a buffer over overflow because it will copy the two arguments uh, into a buffer so he is accept expecting 200 from here 200 for there and then 400 will be enough input validation have you heard about input validation at the university have you heard of input validation put put up your hands if you have heard at the university from input validation are you a teacher somewhere i i, I bet and this is a big uh, shortcoming of the developers because uh, you really can't hear much about info, input validation 80% of security errors can be prevented by input validation or may even 90% if the expected data is controlled. If I uh, receive numbers, then I, I really get numbers. If, if I have five characters, then I should have a length of five characters. That's, uh, that's a web problem. Let's start at the beginning and let's uh, uh, jump into the middle uh, since it is a CGI and uh, uh, UML is used to pass the share code uh, for this reason it should have certain character restrictions those characters that cannot be printed on the web will not pass what characters can we input into this pro program I will just draw an URL and then you will be able to imagine this kind of uh, characters that we can input. Here is the flip chart, take a look at this. But he's not using the microphone, please tell him that the interpreter doesn't hear him at all and doesn't see him at all. Here we stop interpreting. <laughs> It is impossible to translate because you don't have a mic. And we can't see what you are drawing at all. Okay, he will explain it later as soon as he read, uh, writes it. Sorry. First I wrote it and now I explain it. This is a typical URL, CG, CG level, X uh, is the, the attackable part. It, it is given a parameter, which is one now, so that we have space enough and cups 
and it gets uh, parameter B with the value of 2. You have seen URL till you type them in. What kind of characters can you specify under a URL? There is a special device with which we can produce uh, papers with. Sorry, we can't hear this English. Yeah, he says printable characters, and he he re, he was really given the code re, region from a certain character to the uh, last printable character. Printable characters uh, can be sent in. Let me help you. What is the single character that uh, that should uh, should not be here, but it is on the figure? The only that that cannot be here, but it's on the figure. And there is uh, is it something cannot be here? I, I didn't understand that. One, because it can be found in payload. The CGI script, which works ag uh, uh, according to HTL standard, then he, he, it will identify a beginning of a new parameters. The other big program is that these CGI script, they received info in hexa, they execute it, and uh, jump out. Uh, uh, it is impossible for us to debug because we have one millionth of a second to, to grab it. So we have to do a little trick. And this is the SMN, SMNP viewer exe, if I understood it correctly. And that's where I can click. I don't know if you can see it. From the back we can't see it. The essence of the method is that uh, I can influence the run of the program. I can rewrite the whole binary code. Every po program has an entry point uh, with a little environment, and they they get started under certain rules and under certain parameters. This entry point uh, can be hijacked. Uh, the program. There are certain spaces in the program, empty spaces like here, filled with uh, zero zeros. And I grab uh, the first in uh, instruction and I put a jump instruction that, that it should jump to my own code. You can uh, follow the red strip, which points to the end of the jump statement. And this is where we, we land. How can we get hold of the running of the program? A sleep is put in. We put a value into register. As far as I can see here, it is 15 seconds. We put it into a register. And we, we save the register onto the stack. And then we call kernel 32 DL uh, the, uh, uh, the sleep function. And as soon as sleep function is over, which yeah, take off uh, uh, the top data on the stack as time, this is 15 seconds. And the jump that we wrote ourselves, we jump back to the original entry point of the program. And uh, then our uh, code runs problem free on. There are lots of cases like this. Slowly, quietly, with certain tranquility, we start our program. We just jump back to Windows, and from the debugger, we jump over to this little binary part. And then let's see the sharp test if it really works. Thanks, God. Uh, service should be restarted because uh, CGI always uh, gets out because they, they are more intelligent species. Now let me show you what we can do instead. That was the program that uh, either operated or uh, didn't operate this morning like uh, in the fairy tales. If we check the running processes, then we won't see these uh, exit things that I mentioned uh, with underscore. We start the exploit. And among the running processes, 
at the very end. Uh, let me, I try to be quick here at the very end. Here is my small program running and it is now in the sleep phase, uh, moving towards sleep phase. And if I let it uh, run on, then I receive an exception immediately on the basis of what I told you before. What type of uh, overflow is this? That's a question. Let me help you. This is an SEH overflow, exceptional handling overflow, and then here I can see my own instruction, pop, pop, red, uh, as it was shown by my colleague. And I use this genial uh, built-in uh, uh, gadget of Windows, which may help us uh, save our life, especially mine. I told this part that we should run on, and it stopped. At, in, at the interrupt which I uh, set, and from the interrupt we can take steps forward one by one, instruction by instruction. What is the problem here? Uh, what is obvious here to all of you? Yeah, you can see that the, 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 there is an end to it. Uh, we cannot screw it down to infinity. We cannot put a shell code because we have very limited space. In uh, Linux, it would be perfect, but in Windows, 300 bytes um, uh, are here. And if we must do some tricks, because only printable characters can be here, then it uh, will go up to 700, 800, or even up to 1,000. And, uh, and there is only 70, 80, 100 bytes, no more space for the bytes. What else can we do here? This is the end of the stack, and there is nothing else at the bottom of the stack. So we allocate this much, and then here we are down at the bottom of the stack, and then uh, I give one more step and the program dies. What can we do? Very sad uh, jump things here. If I, we scroll it back, uh, the debugger scroll back, then we can see that uh, yeah, we have space here, space enough here. And I already revealed what you should do. Any assembly code can be squeezed in, whatever I want. Just use your fantasy, use your own imagination. That's it, that's it. We try to jump back to, to where, what is the code of the jump? From Ferry's slide? Just take a look at the flip chart. No voice again. If you can read it, that's it. I can't. There are certain character restrictions, and this EP is, or EB is not, is a non-printable character. What else can we do instead? We put, we, we use the tutorial manual uh, with the hexa counterparts of the uh, instruction codes and then we will find those instructions that represent printable characters. With this semi-finished code I wanted to help you. What is subtraction? Subtraction. Opcode S S U B in assembly. Sub subtraction. Who who learned assembly language here or wrote some code in assembly? Good, good, because that this is an S U B subtraction interaction. So all we do here is take the stack pointer, we save it to the stack so that we can use it and then put it back into a register so that we can use it for operations. And since the SUB value to the A and somebody has uh, in front of them perhaps uh, a hexadecimal table, you can see that this is a printable character. All we need to do is subtract off that value. 
and the SUBEA hex. We use that as a register in which we subtract the values, and these are within definite character ranges. And they must be printable, so we must subtract three times, which normally we could subtract in one go. And I can influence the content of this register in whatever way. And I can subtract from it, since the stack is pointing here. On the left, it's black. That's where the program run is at. If we subtract, we get where? We subtract 5,000, we go up. We go back to the lots of A's, where there is space, and we can include payload. And then what we do is put that into the stack and pop ESP. We issue the command to overwrite the ESP value and jump ESP. Um, the code will make a jump to that code snippet. And if all goes well, our code will run. The only thing to watch out for, I wonder who's used Metasploit uh, to generate shared programs. None of you? No one? Then go back and check. You can generate all sorts of share codes very easily. And thankfully, smarter people than us already wrote that part so we don't have to days, uh, uh, spend days and weeks. It will produce printable characters. All you need to do is include that in your template and then the code will work. Well, those in doubt can continue to use the Egg Hunter, as in the previous example. And since we're at HTTP, in the user agent or whatever, we can include our shell code. And it's enough to include our Egg Hunter, uh, 32 bytes. Uh, how much here? A bit more, because it must be converted, because it also includes non-printing characters. Have you got the figure? The mods or shakes? Then I will tell you once again, good, thank you. And after a rec hunter has done its run, the user string will be placed in memory, a hunter will find it, and our code will run. And this NNM is a tricky one because thread management is incredible and they will crisscross memory areas that are exploits that uh, will work for a minute and then automatically will terminate because another thread will write into the share code section so you should test doing this when you have a bit of experience writing share code exploits and the nice way to go about this would be to start in the morning and finish off in the evening. And then I could have checked um, whether everyone was with me and whether they were doing things all right. And now let's just check if this code, if all is true and well, then you can find that on the DVD. Yes, you can download it. Yes, that's the one. Thanks. Feel free to test it, experiment with it. Well, I don't know uh, how to program in assembly, but this one takes very little knowledge, mostly about the programming structure. And we live in a comfortable age. Almost everything is available on the web. So there are very few problems left for which there is no solution or help available. So we've run out of time. Thank you very much for staying with us and for your perseverance. And if you have any questions to ask of me, maybe not tomorrow, but Ferry certainly will be here. And I'm available throughout the day. And you're all kindly invited to the evening party, because those of you who want to miss it don't know what they will miss. Thank you.